What's up guys, welcome back to Vanover Customs and in today's video we're continuing on with the Skyhook build out. If you haven't seen the previous video in part one, take a look up in the card or link in the description for that video. In that video we built a custom base for the Skyhook, we modified another base, we made a tool block for the lathe and we actually modified the Skyhook itself so that way it could be installed on the lathe or on either base for either milling machine. In today's video, we're gonna be working on making two new dog bones or extensions for the base to increase the articulation of the crane. And then we'll be making some individual extensions to change the height of the sky hook and then getting everything painted. And we'll also be reviewing the sky hook and our custom made mounts. So if you like that type of video, stick around. We're gonna jump right into it. Over at the bench, we have our material laid out and here's our plan of attack. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna machine the male pins. So the way this is gonna be laid out, it's kind of like this. We'll have the male pin that goes into the female receiver and then we'll have a female receiver up here where the crane or another extension can slide into. Step one is gonna to be to get these machined to the proper OD that matches the sky hook. Once that's done, we're gonna get the pipe coped on both sides. Then we're gonna go ahead and face and chamfer this part over here. And then we'll make and weld on a bung uh, for the set screw or locking screw. Once all that's done, we'll get all this stuff welded out. And then for our final step, we're gonna take this over to the K and T and line bore this bushing here and the reason we're gonna do that is I wanna keep everything nice and concentric. And when we weld this, it's gonna shrink. And since we're keeping a tight tolerance, I don't wanna lose that nice bore. So we'll get everything welded out. And then once we're done, we'll bore that out. Now we could do, use a boring bar on the lathe if my lathe could swing this. Uh, on my bigger lathe it can, but it's not together. Or you could use a boring head over at the milling machine but frankly, that's a really long extension. So I think that'll be the best way to kind of achieve what we're looking for. So step one, we'll go ahead and get these chucked up in the lathe and start getting those turned down. So now that we have those two longer pins done, we're gonna get the shorter female receiver pins up here and we are gonna be line boring these like we talked about, so we don't need to machine them. Uh, but what we are going to do is I am going to face both sides and then do a nice heavy chamfer, both inner and OD. Uh, that way we don't have to worry about trying to do that over on the K&T because it'll be much easier here. take it off and we'll bring the other one over and we'll see how off they are and we'll just adjust one of them. It uh, looks like that one is 50 thousandths lower. So we'll take this one and we'll bring 50 thousandths off of it and kind of go from there. All right, next step is to make the bungs. These bungs are just gonna add some additional support for our threaded locking knobs. We're making this out of some metal I found in the scrap bin. We'll get these faced, drilled, chamfered and parted off and then we'll bring them to final size once they've already been welded. So let's get started with facing them off. We got all our parts machined and ready for the next step, which is coping these two pieces of pipe. Now we could do this on the mill with a boring head, 
uh, and set our distance, but frankly, that's just gonna be a lot of tediousness and it's not really necessary. We're just trying to get this prepared close for welding and since we're gonna be MIG welding, we're gonna be able to fill gaps anyway. So the way we're gonna cope these pipe is over on the belt grinder. I actually have some wheel attachments, both for three inch and two and a quarter, and we'll cope uh, all four ends of the pipe on the belt grinder, and it should give us a really nice fit um, and be you know, significantly faster than trying to do it on the milling machine. We got these guys tacked up and ready to get them welded out. The copes turned out really nice. The three inch side was a perfect fit and the two and a quarter is not quite there, but it shouldn't matter since we're migging these. All right, we got both of these extension arms welded out and they turned out pretty good. Got the bungs on there, so we're ready. They fit, drop in nice, uh, even after they've cooled, no issues there. So we're gonna come in here and bore these guys out um, over on the KNT and then these extension arms should be done. We're over here at the KNT and we have our parts set up in the mill. I went ahead and indicated on the other side of the pin. So this should be nice and in line and parallel with the other pin. And we just have it referenced squareness off of the tube, which should be good enough for what we're doing. Um, we have a machinist jack under here, under the bung, and we have it firmly clamped. So rigidity shouldn't be an issue. We're running an inch and a half inch bar, I believe. Um, and we have a raised carbide tool. I wanted to use a carbide initially, uh, but because the bore is so small, I either had to go high speed or braised carbide uh, just for stick out. We got this one done. I have it over here in the vise, just showing you how clean that bore turned out. Uh, overall, very happy with the results. I measured it on both sides and the measurement is exactly the same. We did bore a little bit off center from the top view looking down, uh, but that's no problem because we were boring in line with this tube and more importantly, in the same dimension as the pin on the back side. So that won't make that much of a difference at all. Uh, all we care about is this diameter and being parallel to the other side for the most part. So we're going to finish the next one up off camera and then I'll bring you back when that one's done for the next step.
well, we got the dog bones done and everything turned out really, really nice. I'm really happy with the way the weld turned out. The bores turned uh, out good and then the pins turned out really nice as well. Everything's nice and straight and has a really good fit. The next step is to make some end caps to put on the ends. We'll get those pressed in and I may end up just throwing some tacks on the bottom uh, just so that the caps don't pop out over time. Uh, but once we get those caps pressed on, these parts will be done. Uh, these were probably one of the more complicated parts next to the tool block we made for the lathe. Um, so once these are done, we'll move on to the extensions and we'll be getting close to the end of this project. So let's get over to the lathe and just jam out these caps and go from there. Now that we got the dog bones done, it's time to work on the extension. The extensions are going to be identical to the dog bones without the center section. So it's basically going to be this piece on the top and this piece on the bottom. And it's just going to allow us to change the height of the sky hook if we want to get it higher. The overall length once finished should be about 14 inches plus or minus, you know, like an eighth. Um, and on the top, it's going to have the boss for the set screws to lock it down. So the process to make this is pretty straightforward. We're gonna take a piece like this, this is just for demonstration. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get it inserted into this piece here. We'll do a socket weld, and then we'll work on both sides, the ID and the OD over on the lathe to match both the ID of this and the OD of this. So we're gonna start off at the saw and do four cutoffs. Uh, all four will be about eight inches, and then we'll go from there. We got these holes bored out and chamfered on both sides and then faced. And then I went ahead and just chamfered these guys and faced them uh, and then polished 
the OD with some emery cloth. We're gonna go ahead and get these pressed in here. They're not really a press fit. Um, if anything, these holes are on size or a half a thousandths bigger. We're just more or less gonna use the Arbor Press to kind of assist them in and then we'll get them welded out. Got our riser spacer done. That'll drop in like that. There we go. So we're gonna make two of these. And what I need to do is just put a boss on here, weld it and tap it. We'll do that off camera. And then I'll make the second one off camera as well. And we'll bring it back when they're done. Overall, turned out really, really nice. Tolerance on this was pretty good. Uh, the tolerance on the bottom, I was about a thousand smaller than the other pins, uh, but that's no problem. I mean, we're splitting hairs at this point. Um, very good for what we're doing. And then after we get these two guys done, uh, we'll move on to what I think is the last part of the process, or the project rather. We got both of the extensions done and I'm really happy with how they turned out. We're gonna be painting all this anyway, except for the bottom portion. So we're moving on to the last step and that is to make a tool tray. Let me bring you over to the bridge port and kind of explain what I'm talking about. Over here at the bridge port, you can kind of see how we have our base staged with one of our dog bones. This is really nice because this is gonna allow us to come all the way over here to the back shelf where I store my rotary table and my dividing head and to be able to grab them and then bring them right over here to the table. Not only will it allow me to do that with some sort of a shelf that we're gonna be talking about, but also I can take my sky hook and drop it in here and move the vise or anything else. Anything over at this mill isn't gonna be really much heavier than 200 pounds anyway. So this extension, which cuts the 500 pounds in half will be more than adequate. And if I need to, I have my extensions to kind of manipulate and do whatever need be. And this is nice because this can go in a nice 
360 degree radius all the way around the mill. But since we're over here, what I figured I would do is instead of just let this hang out, I would take the opportunity to make a tool tray. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a square and it's gonna be offset since it's tighter over here than here. So it'll live kind of like this and it'll drop in and I'm gonna have maybe a magnetic strip on the front and a couple hooks for some wrenches and then we'll have a tray. And that'll allow me while I'm working on the mill, if I have collets or anything I'm working with tools, I can kind of set them on this tray and then if they're in the way, because I have movement here, I can just kind of push them out of the way. The other benefit, kind of like I explained, is this tray, and I designed this intentionally. Right now, this is sitting like an inch below the surface, but I'm gonna make it so the tray is even or just slightly below this shelf. So what I can do is I can actually slide this stuff onto the tray and bring the tray over here and slide it onto the table by bringing the table up. That way I don't need to rig everything that's heavy that I need to move. I can just simply slide it on, slide it off. And I've got a fair amount of range here where I can fit whatever I want. Now I know this is specific to this exact setup, which is true, um, but for this current arrangement, which isn't gonna change, it'll help. And if I ever move this, everything is modular. So the tray is kind of just like an afterthought or a bonus, but everything else can be removed and moved into a location where it can be helpful.
Well, after about three months and a trip to the hospital, we finally finished this skyhook project. Now, obviously I'm alive and doing well, and we'll talk more about that in another video, but we were able to wrap this up and it turned out great. It looks amazing and functions even better. If you guys have been enjoying this part two, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want a little bit of bonus content, we're actually gonna move around to all three stations that I have this set up and we'll do a little bit of chatting about my review of the Skyhook and the individual setups. So let's jump right into that. All right, we'll start out right over here at the K&T mill and just talk about why we chose this setup, the location of the base and what the intent is for. Now, just a brief summary on the Skyhook. If you don't already know, there's a ton of videos on YouTube, but basically this is designed to lift things that are kind of in between a crane and a manual lift, like with yourself. And I do have two jib cranes in the shop, a forklift and a couple other lifting methods. But the benefit that this adds uh, to my shop and to a lot of other shops is that it helps with medium sized lifting. So like over here, this vise is about 100 pounds and I can lift it, uh, but that's the type of thing where I would throw my back out, you know, on a bad day. Right, and so something like this with a load capacity of 500 pounds is excellent for doing something like that. Uh, same thing about fixtures, I just made, and you'll probably seen the video, an angle plate, and that was about 200 pounds. And again, can I lift it? Probably shouldn't be. Um, I could use the forklift, but it's kind of a pain. So this is excellent for that type of stuff. Now the Skyhook itself, um, these are excellent. They're really, really nice. Uh, they make them in a couple variations and I'm not going to get too in depth on that. But the moral of the story is they're worth the money, uh, but they are kind of pricey. And I wanted one for many years, but just didn't want to spend the cash. And so I found one of these on Marketplace for about 500 bucks with a stand. And I was able to pick one up cheap. Um, and a, like a lot of good things, the benefit comes with the accessories and the accessories can add up pretty quick. So I decided uh, because I pulled my back out on this machine moving stuff around, let's finally do it and grab one of these. Now I was going to go ahead and build one and Josh Topper's got a really nice video as well as a couple other videos uh, on YouTube about building one and you know me, I kind of overbuild things and what I realized was if I'm gonna overbuild a Skyhook, it's probably gonna be cheaper to just buy one and probably better so that's what I did, and I picked one up pretty cheap. So the Skyhook itself works really, really nice. It's really smooth, um, but paying full price for one, depending on your shop situation, is something that you have to consider. So we decided to go ahead and build these bases and accessories, not only to cut down on costs, but to improve the quality of the Skyhook, mostly the fit of the base, but more importantly, to be able to use this in multiple locations. So they make this skyhook so that it can go on a lathe with a different base, and then they make one that goes in a cart, and that's this style, uh, or on a stationary base, which is also this style. And I really wanted the best of all the worlds, right? I wanted to be able to use it on a mobile base and use it over on the lathe. And so instead of using a dedicated lathe mount skyhook, I ended up adapting this so I can use it in all three situations. So that's kind of a basic rundown of the Skyhook itself um, and why I purchased one and what I'm gonna be using it for. Now let's talk specifically at this station what my thought process was. So one thing that I do over here on the K&T occasionally but not very frequently is I remove these uh, RAM overarm supports and I know people are gonna be pretty upset about that because I have it too close to the wall and you're correct. Uh, but because of my shop setup and because I mostly use it with the rams uh, in this position, I chose to mount it close to the wall so that I could have room in front of it for other things. But what that means is occasionally, I need to remove these arms for clearance. Now, when you add a dog bone or an adapter, it cuts the load capacity in half. And I've weighed these and they're about 20 to 30 pounds over that half capacity. However, um, it should work. And what I wanted is I wanted something that could come in here and with a combination of extensions and dog bones, be able to pick these up and maneuver them out and lower them to the floor. That's kind of a luxury. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but it should work. 
I was moving these with the forklift, but it's just a pain in the butt and the forklift uh, is just not ideal. The benefit of this is it articulates, so you can kind of slide it out as the arm comes out, and so I think it'll work well. Um, but again, I don't do that often. Mainly, what I did this setup over here for was for the vices and the angle plate. And so that's what we have it here. Now, I don't need the dog bone to do that. I just have it set up mostly for storage, but that's the main setup over here at the K&T. Let's jump over to the bridge port and talk about that setup next. All right, we're over here at the bridge port, and this setup is similar to the K&T, but it has a little bit of a twist. Now, the beauty of the setup here is the modularity, meaning that all these setups, whether it's the table or the dog bones or the extensions, they can all be interchanged and used on different machines. So over there, I have the skyhook set up, and it's just going to stay stored over there. And because I knew it was going to live over there most of the time when it's not being used, I figured I'd take advantage of some empty space. So in doing that, I came up with this design to make this table. And this table can be used here or over there at the K&T, but mostly it's just going to live here to cover this hole. And I thought, let's take advantage of an empty hole while we have it. So this table does a couple things. One, I can take my sky hook and I can take this out, and I, it's secured right now. And I can put my sky hook in there and use it just like we do on the K&T, moving the vise, moving what else, um, whatever I need to, and it works well. The other thing is with the extensions, I've mapped this out, so if I ever need to remove the head on the bridge port for service, which will happen, um, I can stack two extensions on here and use the sky hook and grab the head and bring it over to the ground, just because my jib crane is very close to being too short in, in terms of the arc swing. So that's really, really nice. Again, that's something that's only gonna happen once, but I designed it that way just to kind of make it easier on me in the future. More importantly, it's just gonna be used to move the vise, angle plates, but mostly to move our dividing head. And that's the main purpose of this table. Now, you can get the sky hook set up in here and come and grab this uh, dividing head that you see in the back, but I was trying to be clever and I thought it'd be really cool if we designed this at the same height or very close, so that way I don't even have to get the sky hook. So what this allows me to do is take this, I take off the mat, it's nice and slick, we slide this on here, we move it over here, we adjust the table and we slide it off. That is amazing. Um, I do have a rotary, t or a, uh, yeah, it's a rotary table over here. I need to restore it, it works just fine. But same thing, I can take that, I can wing this all the way around here and kind of rotate it, and boom, I slide it on here, slip it over here and slide it off. Really, really convenient. And again, those are two things, accessories for this machine that are heavy and that if I try to lift them, I might be fine or I might pull my back out. And so making it easy allows you to go ahead, I'm sorry, making it easy allows you to do it easy. When it comes to safety, if it's inconvenient, you're not gonna do it. And by making this simple, it means that I'm going to want to do it. So that's the first usage of this table. The second usage, which you probably already figured out, is just as a table um, for tooling. So one issue that you run into on all machines is that when you're operating it, it gets cluttered, right? And just as an example, I'm going to grab some random stuff here. I'll be working over here at the bridge port, and all of a sudden, all this junk lands up on the table. You're scratching up the table, you got chips everywhere, it's a disaster, right? So what I did is I went ahead and I did this magnetic strip here, which is awesome. Uh, I know it's magnetic, chips, all that, but I have one over there, you just clean it off. Uh, so when I'm using end mills or anything, instead of just toss it on the table, I can come over here and just magnetically stack it, which is really, really nice. Or over here, I can set stuff up here. And because it's rubber and it's not part of the machine, it's going to stay stationary. The other benefit is I can move this. So like you saw, my air hose fell earlier. I have my air hose up here. And if I want to move this out of the way because I need to get my table back, I move it out of the way. If I want to bring it over a little bit closer, I bring it over a little bit closer. Again, it's kind of just a bonus feature, which the real purpose here is to use the sky hook but I think this is gonna be really, really nice 
because I know a lot of you guys can relate to working on these machines and just having tooling piled up everywhere. And you see kind of in the shot, I have this beater-ish surface plate and I try to avoid setting stuff on it, but you know how that goes. And so this will kind of help with that to keep stuff off this surface plate. Um, so yeah, over here, that's pretty much it as far as the table and the sky hook. Uh, let's move over to the lathe and talk about that setup. We're over here at the pacemaker lathe and this setup is the one that I'm the most excited about. Being able to change the chuck and move the steady rest around on this lathe is gonna be a game changer. Now, if you watch the back side of me, you can kind of see how inconveniently placed the weight is when you go to change the chuck. You have to kind of lean over and you got a lot of weight sideways. And that really is a problem. Now there's things you can do with stacking wood and I've done that before and I might actually overlay some B-roll of the method that I used to change this and it worked. Um, but honestly, it's really not recommended and this is way better. So I'm loving the idea that I can just bring this over here and because I have movement in both directions, I have the benefits that I have with the dog bone uh, and the benefit is not just being stuck in one place. Uh, one of the cons of those bases where they're just fixed is it can only go in an arc swing in the one spot. Whereas the dog bone adds not only more length, but more opportunities within that radius. And this does the same thing because we have movement and two axes. So not only does it make taking this chuck off really nice and easy, but when I have stuff sitting on the ground, I can go ahead and pick up a steady rest with this guy or pick up a chuck and go ahead and install that. And I've already experimented. You can actually put a dog bone in this and I can reach to the back and pick up stuff back there. Uh, like for a minute I had the four jaw chuck sitting back there. I can pick it up. I can do all sorts of things. I can, if I need to and I want to service the lid, I can bring this close and lift off the lid and get in there as well because that lid's like 80 pounds. So it's really, really nice. And I really like this setup compared to the other setups, the factory setup, because it allows me to use this on all three setups. And I know I kind of talked about that, but if I went to Skyhook and purchased this setup for the lathe, I would have a dedicated tool post holder, which is really nice, but then I need to make adapters for the mill and I wouldn't be able to do what I can do right now. So although this was more work, it allows me more modularity than just having a dedicated lathe skyhook setup. Uh, other than that, there's not really a whole lot to say over here about the skyhook. Um, there's videos removing chucks. I'm not gonna do that. That's pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory, um, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I've been avoiding changing the chucks because it's inconvenient. And so this is gonna help me uh, be more likely to change the chuck that's best for the job. Um, and because it's nice to use, it makes it fun. It makes it fun to come over here and switch the chucks. So it's taking something that's a pain in the butt and make it kind of fun. And that's really the beauty of the Skyhook. So that's pretty much all we have over here at the lathe. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this content. Please let me know what your thoughts are down below and I'll be looking forward to reading those. We'll catch you in the next one.